Right, let's make a start then. Um, so today, as I said, we're going to start the course proper. So we're going to start looking at the theory of special relativity. Um, so the experimental observations that led to the theory of special relativity were really about measuring the speed of light. Okay? Um, and the first measurement of the speed of light was in the 1600s, but wasn't very accurate. Um, and later that, you got more and more accurate results. And at some point in the 1800s, people started to note there were some problems uh, with some of these measurements of, of light compared to Newtonian physics. And this was the catalyst for the birth of special relativity. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to show you this presentation here. Um, what this presentation is, is just showing you a couple of ways you can measure the speed of light. So I'm going to show you the first way the speed of light was measured, and then another way, which was to perform later on, which got a more accurate answer. Okay. Um, so measuring the speed of light is actually a very difficult thing to do. Right? If you're trying to measure the speed of you know, somebody walking or measuring the speed of a car, then it's quite easy. Right? Speed is distance divided by time. So wait a second, see how far they've gone. And then you know, if they go 10 meters in one second, then their speed is 10 meters per second. Right? That's very easy. But you can't measure the speed of light in that way. Um, because it's so fast, if you wait a second, you know, it's, it's already gone to the moon. So, for that reason, um, first slide. Okay. for that reason, the question of the speed of light has been something which was discussed for a long time throughout history. Okay, it was discussed by the Greek philosophers. Um, Aristotle thought the speed of light was infinite. That means as soon as you switch on the light, it fills the whole space. Okay, um, whereas other philosophers like this guy. Empedocles thought it was a finite speed, okay, but, but at this time they had no way of measuring it. Okay, it was just beyond their technical capacity to measure. And therefore people kept debating it right up until the 17th century. Um, so you may have heard of these guys. This is Kepler. Have you heard of Kepler's laws? So he was a famous um, astronomer. He thought the speed of light was infinite. Uh, another famous scientist, Christian Huygens, thought the speed of light was finite. And Christian Huygens was actually the guy who first did a calculation of the speed of light. So before him, it was just, you know, chat. There was no actual evidence either way. Okay. And the first piece of evidence that arose was based upon observations by this guy, who is Ole Roma. Okay. Um, who, the pictures of it, um, misleading. So he is actually younger than he was at the time. This is a young picture of Huygens and an old picture of Roma, but at the same time, he was younger and he was older. Um, so when Roma was young, he was making some observations of Jupiter's moon. Okay? So I, I showed you this picture in the introductory lecture last time. right? I showed you a picture of Jupiter and its four moons. Okay. And in particular, Roma was observing the moon Io as it moved around Jupiter. Okay? And if you observe this, then you see something interesting happen. There's what's called an eclipse. Io is eclipsed by Jupiter. What this means is, you see Io here, this is Jupiter. Then Io is orbiting around Jupiter. So you see it move towards Jupiter. But then, before it reaches the planet, at a particular point, it disappears. That's what we call the eclipse. And then later on, it comes out the other side. It's going behind you. I'll just play it one more time. You see that about here, before it reaches the planet, it suddenly disappears. Okay? So that was known as an eclipse. And what Romo was observing was the time at which these eclipses happened. Okay? The time at which Io appeared to vanish. So you can understand the reason for this um, quite simply. Here's a caricature of the solar system. So you've got the sun here, Jupiter, Io, and here's us on the Earth. Okay. So the reason we can see Jupiter and Io is because they reflect light from the sun. Right? They don't emit much light themselves, but they reflect the sun's light. Okay. 
But that means we can only see Io if there is a direct path between Io and the Sun, like here. In particular, Jupiter blocks out the Sun's light in this region here. Right? And that means once Io enters this region here, we can no longer see it. Right? It's still there, but the light from the Sun can't reach it. So therefore, it looks like it vanishes. Okay? And that's what the eclipse is. It's when Io moves behind Jupiter's shadow. Okay. So, Roma observed this eclipse happen many times, and he noticed something interesting. He noticed that when the Earth was moving away from Jupiter here, like at A, and when the Earth was moving towards Jupiter, like at B, the time between eclipses was different. Okay? And it was different by about 32 seconds. The time between eclipses was 32 seconds longer at A than it was at B. Okay. So that was the observation. And Huygens, who was the guy I showed you in the previous slide, this guy, he explained this observation using the finite speed of light. And he explained it in the following way. Okay. So you imagine that you're observing eclipse at A. Okay. So A1 is the time of the first eclipse, when you see Io vanish here. Okay. Then Io goes all the way around Jupiter and comes back, and then there's a second eclipse, right, which is at A2. But because the Earth is moving, the Earth is now further away from Jupiter. Right? So it's closer at A1 and further away at A2. Right. So now it goes around the Sun, and then you measure the same thing when the Earth is moving towards Jupiter. And in this case, the first eclipse, the Earth is far away, and the second eclipse, the Earth is closer. So the, the difference between the A observations and the B observation is here A1 is closer than A2, and here B1 is further than B2. Now, if the speed of light is finite, that means that the time it takes light to go from here to A1 is shorter than the time it takes light to go from here to A2. Now, what that means is that the observed time between eclipses will be longer, right? Because the eclipse happens regularly, okay? But the first time it happens, it only takes a short amount of time for the light to reach us. But the second time it happens, it takes more time. So the signal looks delayed. Right? It looks slower than it actually is. On the other hand, when the Earth is going towards Jupiter, the first time it takes a long time for the light to reach us, the second time it takes a shorter time. So therefore, the, the signal, the orbit of Io, seems to be speeded up slightly. Okay. So this effect is actually the same as the Doppler effect. You may have heard of Doppler effect, right? If you listen to a car's engine as it goes past you, it, when it's coming toward you, it goes and Then when it goes past you, it goes right? So this is the same thing. When it's coming towards you, the frequency of the sound is increased. Right? And when it's going away from you, the frequency of the sound is decreased. And this is exactly the same effect here. When you're going away from Jupiter, the orbit looks to be slower. And when you're going towards Jupiter, the orbit looks to be faster. But the effect is very small. As I said, it's about 32 seconds every two days. So it's, it's not a big effect. Okay, so Huygens explained Roma's observations in this way. This is evidence as a finite speed of light. And he estimated the speed of light, and he got an answer of about 220,000 kilometers per second. Okay, so the modern value for the speed of light is basically 300 thousand kilometers per second. It's not quite exact. It's 299 something something something. Okay, but close enough to three. So we're going to call it three in this class. Okay. So he, he made a bit of error, um, and I'll talk later on about what his error was, but he got about the right kind of answer. You know, as a first estimate of the speed of light, this is not bad. 